Hey guys, coming back at you with a new project where you can make these cute little marbled mushrooms or cane covered mushrooms. In this video, I'll show you how I go about doing this. It's uh, pretty simple, something you know your you and your family can sit down and do. I do hope you enjoy. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, to make your marbled mushrooms, you're gonna need some scrap clay. This is a scrap clay friendly project, so you might be excited to hear about that. What I have here is a container of just a bunch of scrap clay. I'm going to dump it out onto here, but first I'm going to lay this wax paper down. That way getting it back up and put it in here is a lot easier on me. So let's just dump this out and see what we have. Okay, we have a bunch of various clays here. Um, this blue and black stuff is from the Butterfly Cane Project. This right here is a mixture of clay where I mixed a bunch of this stuff together. It kind of makes a color like this. So what I'm going to need is I'm going to need material for my core, the core of the mushroom. And I'm going to need material for, obviously, to do the marbled part. I'm going to use this for the for the um the core of the mushroom. So I'll just set this to the side. Now I got to find colors that would look good for marbling. I'm going to mess around with this blue bluish and white stuff right here. Here's some more of that, some extra black, and I'm going to throw in a little bit of yellow with that because I think that would be a good color to pop. When using colors to pop, you kind of want to tease with that color. You don't want a bunch of it. And I also have a piece of leftover cane, which that's pretty cool. I'm going to do something entirely different with this. Instead of it being marbled, I'll just cut slices and cover the core with, um, you know, a cane. So I'll just set that right here. So it looks like I got enough for three good examples. Okay, so first I'm going to take a little bit of this. I don't need them. I don't need very much. These aren't going to be very big charms. And I'm going to just knead it with my hands till it softens up a little bit. But it's not so much of it becoming soft because some clays are a little harder than others. It's more of the molecules becoming active and it has such, like a viscosity to it. See how that's not really breaking? I can pull on it like that and it doesn't really break. Watch this other one. Do you see how it's cr like it crumbles and, and separates? That's what conditioning means. You're trying to get it to where it doesn't do that. It has more of a fluid fluidness to it. Uh, I'm not the greatest at explaining that. Now I want to make three charms. So I'm going to roll this out. To where it's fairly even all the way down it and then I can just cut me what I think will be a good size charm this is not making it exact like completely exact but it's close enough to where you have similar cores if you're not quite sure how big you should have it you can just form up the mushroom with just the core material first to see how it'll look. To do that, I'll do it really quick. You pinch right here and leave this part alone. It'll become bulbous and you'll have a stalk or the stem forming right here. And then you just, you're pinching and pulling a little bit like this to bring out that top part. Just roll that again on your feet with your fingers. This is kind of soft, this clay. It probably would help if it was a little firmer. Then you just take this part and push it down like that. And you can get like all kinds of cool characteristics. Like if you want it to be wavy like that, then you can do it. But you just keep your thumb or finger or something right there to keep from smushing it all down. 
and you can roll it around, uh, roll it over on it, so to speak, to where you have. See, that's a that's a mushroom right there. And then you just flatten out the bottom. If it's really soft, you're just doing a lot of touching. You're not forcing the clay. There, that's a mushroom. See, this looks like a pretty decent sized charm. Something you should consider is it's going to be a little bit more clay than this because you're going to form this into a ball like that. And then you're going to cover this in a marbly looking, you know, a thin, thin layer of marbled clay or cane or whatever it is you want to use. So it'll become a little bit larger. So this is a good way to test to see, you know, you, you could just make the core first without any clay on it and see, get, get, you know, get an idea how big it's going to be. So, so now that I'm comfortable with the size of this, I can continue on to the next part. Now for the marbling part, this is the same story. You got clay that's not kneaded. It's, you got to knead it because it's crumbly like that. And this is just a mixture of a, a bunch of colors that were used, like scrap pieces that were used for that butterfly cane. In the event that you don't have an existing cane project, you know, the scrap clay from it, I'll try to show you how to just make marbled clay from straight colors. I don't recommend doing that, though, because it's... Making marbled clay with your with your scrap clay gives a great use for it, and it doesn't. I'm not saying it's really wasteful on your colors. It's just colored clay is expensive, and if you're making projects and you're trying and experimenting with things, you're gonna wind up with scrap anyways. So it's better to just use your scrap clay. And I'm not really folding this. I'm just compressing it like this way, and then turning it and compressing it. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to mix this. I don't want to mix this into a unified color because it'll wind up something like this, which is boring. So I'm just pinching it, turning it. I'm just crushing it in different angles, so to speak, until that clay loosens up a little bit on me. That's pretty good right there for that part. Now I'll do that for this. It can be a little bit difficult if you have arthritis or something in your hands. This can be really difficult to do. Um, I've seen people use, or uh, at least I, I've heard of there being, where you, you can use a press to smash the clay. Um, I don't know where you get those things, but it seems like a, a good option for someone who can't do this part. Or you can just use a jar a jar and crush it with the jar. Or you know, anything hard like this. I just use this the handle of this tool. Now if I stand it up on the end again. See, I'm doing the same concept using this tool instead. So maybe you can use pretty much anything. This is becoming looser now. So I have a whitish to blue with a hint of black. And this is more, this is blue with a lot of black in it. And I got this wee little piece of yellow. Okay, so I don't really need all of this, I don't think. I want to have some of these other colors in it, like this yellow. So I'm just going to roll this out into a snake. I got like a little block with a snake on it. And then pull some of this off, the darker. Perhaps do the same. Now, I just want to let you know that when you're marbling clay, there's no limit on 
how you can do it. There's a million, you can chop this up in tiny little pieces and and get more of a granite effect limit. This is not the way to do it is what I'm trying to say. Now I'm just spinning it a little bit and then I'll crush it this way. In fact, let's do that. Let's chop this up. Like you would potato, uh, uh, you know, a layer of potato. Mix it up and then push it back together. Try not to put too much thought into it. You want to push it back into a ball to see what you have like what is this going to look like I mean what does the marble effect look like in this just cut parts of it off and you'll get an idea of what's going on there we got the blue with the black and the yellow in there looks pretty cool so and, and just keep in mind the more you mix the busier this becomes and the more it turns into, the closer it turns into this. There's got to be a balance of how busy you want it. And you have to figure that out. Like, is this good enough? Will this, will this work for you? And also, you want to cut it in other directions and see if it's doing anything differently. Because depending on how you cut it, like, I'll, I'll join this together again one more time. which further mixes it. But chopping it and rearranging it and putting it back together is way less mixing than actually folding this and compressing it, folding it and compressing it. Because that's what you use, that's what you do to make, you know, a completely unified color. Okay, so I'll roll this out into something similar to you know this now there's all kinds of ways you can do this you can cut little slices see how I got my yellow in there now the black black and the yellow as I get to this side of the, the cane I'm getting more of a mixed you know marbly look whereas the very first one was just blue and white which doesn't look all that bad any either, the blue and white. So let me cut a few more. Now I'm going to take one of my cores to the mushroom, the ball of just mixed scrap. And I'm going to cover this. You just got to keep in mind how, how you want them to be orientated with each other. You can kind of try to match grains. Like, see that black is running with this black now? Or maybe this yellow right here with this part? Just something that you can kind of keep keep in your head. It, it matters how you, uh, how you put it on. I mean, you don't have to put too much thought into it, but just just something to consider. Trying to cover all the little points of you know what's going on here. So now I'm not really even thinking about that. I'm just putting the clay on. I'm covering this core all the way around with these slices. You can reshape a slice to help it fit. Kind of like that. Like see that shape right there? Just make that over here. For little parts just rip off a piece 
you're not going to be able to tell what's going on there. Like that you, you piped in a small piece or whatnot. It's not going to hold all the evidence in there, so to speak. Okay, so this is completely covered now. I'm just pressing, I'm taking turns pressing with my thumb and forefinger or first finger, whatever you call it, pointing finger, squeezing enough to where I'm crushing that skin onto here, onto the um, core. I want it to be completely on there and I'm moving it all around to where I'm, I'm sure I'm doing the whole thing and not just certain areas. It'll kind of let you know, like if I don't spin it no more, it'll turn into a, a log. See how that just did that? So just kind of keep rotating it. And you don't want to smudge, like drag the skin of the, because you'll cause smudging. Just straight, equal presses directly on it and then directly off. On, off. For the next part, just gently roll it into a ball to kind of see what you got going on it's pretty interesting I really like this area right here okay so you have your core with the colored clay covering it the beauty of this is you have real thin layer of colored clay surrounding scrap material which could be a mixture of colored clay or it could be super sculpy or sculpy original which is really cheap, but quite soft. The point is, is the colored clay is expensive stuff. It's the most expensive of all the polymer clay. When you think about weight versus cost, even Super Sculpey, which is about, you know, 12 to $14 a box for one pound. If you were to buy a pound of um, colored clay, it would be quite a bit more. So I'm being smart here by using a thin layer of colored clay on the outside of this because you're never going to see the inside of it anyways. So next part, I'm going to find the top of the mushroom. You just try to envision this is the whole mushroom right here. It hasn't been shaped yet. So just try to look around on it to see what looks interesting, what doesn't. And you can try to play off of these different effects on here when shaping this. Like, I like this yellow mixture part right here, how it's all speckled in. And I also like this area too. So what would look good for the top of the mushroom? Let's say right here. So once you determine that where, where you like the mushroom, we'll do the same thing I just showed you earlier. Push in directly in you're not trying to smudge or drag the clay you're leaving half or a little less than half of the ball alone and pushing in everywhere else push in a little bit more on that part the neck of the mushroom right where the top is and this is actually a mushroom too they look like this when they're baby mushrooms when they're little spores so but we're going to go with a, a mature mushroom. Now I'm going to push, keep my fingers like on both sides or all around like three, put three in there just to keep it from, you know, you'll smush it back down to where it forms into a ball again. To keep it from doing that, put your fingers here. They'll act as a stop and then push gently. What I like to do is push my thumbs together like this and it kind of extrudes out into a flat area, that rounded bulbous part of the clay. It extrudes it out. Just keep doing that gently all the way around. I'm pushing that way while pushing this way with the edges on the top and it's causing like a fold you can also experiment a lot of this is just experimenting anyways now I'm pinching out like this this seems to be working better what I'm trying to do is draw that out not too thin so I have this 
flat looking mushroom. Now, unless that's what you're going for, you would just stop there. Well, at least with that part. But I want to actually round it. So now that I got it coming out a little bit further and this little part right here works, it'll actually work where I put my fingers in there and fold it over. Get it to go round. Once it starts going round, you can move your fingers out of the way. And it gives this under where it kind of droops over because that's how mushrooms do. It's not so much how much force you're putting on it. It's just frequency, the movement of the clay, moving it, pressing it and pressing it and pressing it that causes it to move because this has all been conditioned. So now you take your stalk and roll it out just a little bit with your fingers. You can get your pointy, your thumb and your pointer finger in there a little bit to do the neck right below the, the cap. And what I like to do is go a little bit longer than what you would expect. Make this snake, so to speak, longer than what you really want it to be. And I'll show you why. You can do a really, really cool effect. Still be gentle with it. Okay, now I drew that out quite a bit. Now what you do is you, you can just keep like jiggle, jiggle, wiggle, jiggle and gently spiral it like you want to spiral it right here up in this region start it start it doing the spiral thing and then maybe stop it and then hold it right here and do the wiggle thing again the other direction see how that spirals once you get it doing that then you just wiggle and push push and draw it back in to the length that you want. Correct any kind of bulbous, bulging areas if you want by rolling it again. So now I got this kind of flowy looking effect. That's how you create fluid with the marble effect. Like fluid motion. Now I'm just pushing on the bottom like this and there you have a rather nice little mushroom. It stands on its own and then for the underneath part you just want to take a tool and make your little lines because most mushrooms have the areas underneath them and if you're examining this once it's done and you don't see that it won't feel much like a mushroom. It all depends on what you're wanting. This is going to mess up what I just did a little bit, but it could be corrected again just by gently manipulating the clay. To do that, just push in to fold it over, you know, round it off again. That looks quite nice. So there we have a nice marbled mushroom. I think that looks really nice. And it could be, uh, it could be leaning the cap. It could have a bend to it. It's all on what kind of characteristics you want it to have. This is where your creativity factor kicks in. Like, do you want it like this? However you want it. For the next part, you're gonna want an eye pin, which is one of these little buggers right here. What I like to do is just hold it to where you can see I clearly don't need all of this length right here so I'll cut a little bit of it off be careful to throw your pieces away right away that way they don't get in your foot or whatnot I like to bend the end into a, like a shape like this just like a J and if you need to do any kind of bending along this long part to follow whatever design you got going on you'll have to do that too. I'll bend it just a little bit like that. Cause see how that look see how that's shaped like that? 
Now this is bent to where it kind of matches. I'm going to close this in just a little bit, the J part, to make it smaller so it doesn't become a problem later. And this is all I do is I, I just take this and I'll use the this tool and I'm going to force this down like this into the mushroom. However you want the eye part of this, you want to slightly offset it. And the reason being is because once you stick this in here like that, once you turn it a little bit like this, you basically spin that J down in there and it causes it almost like a key. Like you're putting it and you're turning it and locking it. So when this is baked, it won't come back out. So that right there is pretty much what I'm looking for. And you want to press just a little bit to try to close up. It slices. That J will slice the skin of your mushroom. If you, I'm just rolling this like this. See how I'm rolling it? rolling it towards that that eye pen this exposed you can always test it out just kinda hold it by that and I like how that looks you could probably do a little bit more shaping but be careful because you got now a piece of metal in there and if you mess with it too much you might expose it on the sides which could present a problem later on so this is a completed mushroom charm I think it looks really cool. It's a little marbled tie-dye, whatever you want to call it, mushroom. Uh, it's something different, something cool. So that'll be stored. You know, you can bake that at 275 degrees, or you follow the instruction on the package of the clay. Whatever it says, you follow that. Um, follow the highest temp, longest bake time for if you have multiple clays. Now I'm not gonna mix this up. This is the same thing. It would be the same thing I did there, but this is a little bit different right here. This is a cane that's already been made. It's a bullseye cane. I made a Skinner blend from yellow to bronze, putting the yellow on the inside of the, bull, the bullseye cane and the bronze on the outside, and then wrapping yellow around that, which created contrast. And it's just a little bit, like there's the end of the cane. So that's no good right there. But there's just a little bit here. So I'm thinking maybe this is enough to do something different that I'm thinking about. We'll see. Just cut slices. I'm going to have to go with really thin slices. Now I'll take my other mushroom core. These could be reshaped, perhaps in such a way where putting them on here will be easier. It's up to you. If you got that kind of time but just put them on there I, I would say put them on there gently just in case you have to um, pull something off you just want to get them kind of close together because gaps like that are gonna be kind of hard to to do in that case what you would do is just shape them if I put a corner on that like that it'll fit in that area a little better, leaving less of a gap. It's a labor of love. But if you're really careful, you can get them all on here fairly decently. Because they're gonna distort a little bit anyways once you start rolling it. As you can see, I'm totally just kind of rushing them on here. I'm not giving it much thought and it looks really, really cool. <laughs> this is a very, very skinny piece. I don't know if I want to use that. I am literally running out of cane. This was just a scrap piece of cane. Thought to be, you know, junk. Never to be used. But that's not the case. As you can see, for this little area, I'm going to just reshape this one, try to push in 
It's not going to work very well. All right, it's all covered. And before I start pushing on it really in, like intensely, I'm just pushing together these gap areas. And this is going to distort a lot doing this, which is actually cool. It'll be cool. Like see that see that area right there? I'll just push together these areas until that disappears. Or it becomes the background. If you don't get them to disappear, they become the background to your cane. So now I'm going to push, starting off gently, that core is kind of soft. If it was a little firmer, it would be probably better for me because I can crush these down onto it a little easier. Also, when shaping and forming the actual mushroom itself, it would be a little more resistant, allowing better manipulation. Now I'm going to roll it into a ball. See what I got here? Yeah, it looks pretty neat. Really neat. So what looks like the coolest area? I'm saying, I'm thinking this area right here looks the coolest. So I will start halfway, a little less than half way down, pinching and rotating, forming that stalk doing it exactly the same way I did the other one. Draw out these edges, at least to get them started. I'm separating a little bit right here. I think using a freshly made cane would probably be a lot better, have better results. I actually like that, that splitting effect. I'm gonna leave it alone before I get too crazy far into it I'll make my lines I'm just pushing directly on onto it to make to indent it with this tool and I do one complete pass then come back and try to go in between the spaces that are left you know the formed it makes these big sections and then you just and then it's just a matter of adding some here and there wherever it looks like it might need it turn it just a little bit give it kind of a spin and then bring it back I'm forming that base to it I'm making it flat by pressing down on it I'm shaping it with my fingers and thumbs okay I don't know what to think about the splitting on the top of that that looks kinda of cool it might, it might not, depends on what flavor you like, you know, what it's all personal preference. And the next part would be just to do the eye pin. It's best to hold it with this tool, it gives you more, more control. That's, the J's too wide. The wider this is, the more it's going to want to bust through the, the walls of your stem. And that's more of a, a loop than it is a J now, which doesn't matter because once I s turn this in there, it acts like a key. It's just something that I do. You don't have to do that. Uh, I, I do it because I don't want these things to ever come out. You know, that's not ever good. Push it down there and then turn it a little bit. Now it's locked. Locked in there forever. Once you bake it, it won't come out. Close up my hole by rolling this tool here. Digger's getting anxious. He wants to go outside because he hears the birds waking up this morning. You want to go outside, Bubba? Cool. That's another one. Hold it by the... to get an idea how it's going to hang, dangle. Kind of hold it by that eye pen. So there you have two marbled mushroom mushrooms. Well, one's marbled, and this one's just a cane slice. Kind of has a leopard look to it. It's kind of cool. 
you, you know, using something from another part of nature to incorporate on something entirely different as a fungus. That's pretty much it for this video. These we get baked, like I said, for, you know, if it's 30 minutes per quarter inch thickness, I would do an hour for this one. And the thickest part on this one is a little bit thinner, but you could probably run them together. Um, baking is a personal thing, personal preference, really. Uh, you, if you don't know what you're doing at all, just follow the guides on the package of your, your clay for pretty much decent results but you'll find over time people kind of adjust and readjust the bake times and stuff like that so I, I I hope you enjoyed this little video of doing these mushrooms it was uh fun to do and this is something a project you can do with you know as a family and it's pretty simple I mean, anybody can do this I really appreciate you for taking the time to watch this. Please drop me a comment and let me know what you think about this little project. And don't forget to rate the video. That would be helpful. And until next time, I will see you here again soon. Thank you so much for watching.